Welcome to the John and Heidi Show podcast, brought to you by DirecTV, 1-800-259-7646. Also brought to you by RVWheelitor.com. If you're buying an RV or selling an RV, check out RVWheelitor.com and the Dollar Shave Club. Here's John and Heidi. Thank you so much for listening to the John and Heidi Show on a Tuesday. Hey, baby, how you doing? I'm super. How are you? Good. Going to be uh, talking to your dad later in the program. We have Tuesdays with Charlie. It's always fun. Now, uh, for those of you who know, uh, maybe you've heard us talk to Charlie before. I don't know if you know this, but he's a fun guy. Absolutely. Uh, he likes to drink Schlitz. Of he course. likes to eat Spam. He likes the Chicago <laughs> Bears. And he sells Fords, and he has for a long time, so he's a fan of Fords. And I think, like, Ford Trucks... Well, the spokesperson was Mike Rowe. Is that right? Wasn't he? I, th- I think, I think so. he was. Well, I don't know. Uh, the built Ford tough, and he had the you know the tough jobs or dirty jobs or whatever. Anyway, he last week was accused of robbing a bank in a roundabout way. Uh, Medford, Oregon. There was a bank robber, and it's really funny. Mike Rowe had it on his Facebook page, uh, but it was a a message that he sent out to the people of Medford, Oregon. After finding himself in kind of an awkward spot, there was a bank robber who looks a lot like Mike Rowe, and he was dressed the way Mike Rowe dresses. So Mike Rowe just wanted to make sure that they all knew that, hey, I, 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 was, not, <laughs> I was not in I Medford an today, and uh, his comments were just hilarious. So that's oh, kind of fun. funny. He's a funny guy. I think, I think I'd really, really like him. I think so, too. Coming up here in a bit, we're going to find out what special stuff's going on today. That's coming up in a bit on the John and Heidi Show. This portion of the program is brought to you by Dollar Shave Club. Get razors for $1 a month plus a few bucks shipping so you can enjoy fresh razors every month for as little as $3. Learn more at dollarshaveclub.com slash radio. Today is a special day, Heidi. Do you know what today is? What is today, John? I'm glad you asked. It's Tuesday, the 12th day of January, and today is Kiss a Ginger Day. <laughs> so if you uh, happen to be a redhead, I don't know why they call them gingers. Is ginger I, red? I think so. I don't know. I've never seen ginger, but kiss a ginger day. So if you happen to be a, a person with red hair, get ready to be pelted with kisses all day today. It's going to happen. Also, bean day today and national poetry at work day today. So get all that stuff going for you. Get out there and celebrate by having some beans. Does that with mean a, you're going to be trying to rhyme everything today? Oh, of course I will. Ugh. Have some beans with a ginger. And come up with a poem while you're doing it. <laughs> I don't know. Uh, beans, beans, the magical fruit. The more you eat, the more you toot. Remember that? Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> when I was a kid, I don't know why people said that. I guess I know why they said that, but I, I never understood it, though. <laughs> but I was just kind of dumb. Coming up, we've got your uh, a fun story here that you know is going to be true because you're going to hear it on the radio. But it's it's a very fun one on the way. This portion of the program is brought to you by RVWheelitor.com. If you want to buy or sell an RV, go to RVWheelitor.com. List your RV for free. Learn more at RVWheelitor.com. You know it's true because you heard it on the radio. Uh, Looking for love in all the wrong places? How about finding that special somebody locked up behind bars? Ew. Yeah, you know it's love when a pair of convicted murderers oh my gosh. exchange vows at the Guam Department of Corrections. They get to spend the rest of their lives in separate living quarters, but they got married anyway. Although it's not uncommon for inmates to marry people from the outside, this was the first time inmates married each other, according to a prison chaplain. At least in that prison. Vincent Palmo and Marianne Dolna were married in a prison chapel after they met during an inmate education course. Now, before they exchanged vows, they both had to undergo eight months of psychological testing. So, there you go. Just the fact that they're in there should tell them that they don't really need to bother with the psychological testing. They're both in there for murder? Here's, I don't, uh, it doesn't, does it say? Let's see. Yeah, both convicted murderers. Okay, well, there you go. Um, Well, at least they got that in common anyway. Well, that's true, yeah. They're never going to run out of things to talk about. They'll never get to talk because they're both in prison for the rest of their lives, but... You know, I'm glad that they at least have each other, and they got that going for them. <laughs> now, did the prison pay for this union? I don't know that there was any cost. What would the cost be? They had a chaplain read the vows, and they said, I do, and then he said, I do. Uh, I'm not exactly sure. I wonder <laughs> if they get conjugal visits now. <laughs> Maybe that's that why they did it. I don't, but, but you know what? If, since they're both locked up, I don't think that probably works. I don't know. Have no clue. Not even going to pretend to be any sort of expert in this area because I don't know anything <laughs> about any of that. But I do know coming up, we're going to talk about uh, something really interesting. 
How drunk do you have to be to ask a 12-year-old to drive you home? Well, we'll find out. That's on the way. <laughs> and this whole uh, prisoner marrying prisoner thing, again, that happened in Guam at the Guam Department of Corrections. And you know it's true because you heard it on the radio. The John and Heidi Show is brought to you in part by the Keystone Treatment Center. This is your brain. And this is your brain on drugs. We share silly stories here on the program, but addiction is no joke. If you or someone you know suffers with an addiction to drugs or alcohol, make today the day you seek help. Call toll-free 844-204-1055. That's a toll-free number. Again, 844-204-1055. And this is your brain on drugs. How drunk do you need to be to ask a 12-year-old to drive you home? Mm. A New Zealand man persuaded a 12-year-old boy to drive him home because, and I quote, I'm too drunk. Wilfred Waffey told the youngster to get behind the wheel because he was too inebriated to drive himself. He was arrested and fined $1,300 and disqualified for driving for six months. Wow. Does that seem like the right amount of time? Mm, be, if it was maybe, his first offense. It should be a little longer And I think that. in New Zealand, I think the driving age is 18. I don't know. Police spotted a car and a very young driver and began to follow it. Wilfred was stopped... He was breathalyzed, and he was way over the limit. He said he was just letting the boy drive his car. Judge Noel Walsh said the defendant had forced the boy to drive because he himself was too drunk. The judge addressed, uh, I'm sorry, the judge added uh, that he was seriously concerned about the boy's future if Wilfred happened to be his role model. Mm -hmm. So uh, there you go. Got that going for you. 12 years old, driving some, uh, at least it kind of sounds like they know each other. Because when I first read it, I was thinking that he just found some kid. Hey, you, give me a ride home. (laughs) Uh, So at least it kind of sounds like maybe you knew him. Coming up, we've got some teens in the news for our Moment of Duh. This portion of the program is brought to you by Keystone Treatment Center. Addiction is no laughing matter. Call Keystone Treatment Center toll-free at 1-844-204-1055. Now your Moment of Duh. Four teens in Sayreville, New Jersey, decided to go and have some fun at Christmas time. Their idea of fun's a little different than my idea of fun. Know what they did? What did they do? They stole a baby Jesus from a nativity scene, but not one, not two, not even a dozen, not even two dozen. They stole 27 baby Jesuses from 27 nativity scenes, and they <laughs> planned on burning them. That in, its, in itself right there would That's make not you nice. probably think, you know, even if they were going to steal one and burn one baby Jesus, that'd be bad. But they were planning on doing this with 27. And then you kind of wonder, where in the world would somebody get the idea to do this? And how would somebody get so far off track that they think this is a good idea? Well, then you get a quote from uh, Robert's father. I'm sorry, Robert is the father of Christopher, one of the kids. And his quote was, um, says here, my unemployed high school dropout, already on wow. probation for a disorderly personal offense, uh, has a disagreement with a neighbor, son, is sometimes misguided, unquote. First of all, that quote didn't even make any sense, well, he, which is why you were stuttering through it. But. I think that he was trying to basically say, okay, my son's misguided, but he was throwing in all this stuff that the kid's already done wrong. <laughs> and he's like, you know, he's already... Got this problem, this problem, this problem. Do you think? Yeah, he's like, I'm not shocked by this. You think I didn't know he had issues? Sometimes he's misguided. You know what? Maybe all the times he's misguided. These kids, uh, I don't know. They need to find a better hobby. Coming up, we've got your scoop of the day. That is on the way. The scoop of the day is brought to you by Wells Blue Bunny. If you want delicious ice cream, be sure to look for the Blue Bunny. Sure to have your favorite flavors. Learn more at bluebunny.com. And now, your scoop of the day. A Canadian restaurant chain has introduced a burger patty featuring uh, Reese's peanut butter cups stuffed in the middle. So you can get a hamburger with a Reese's I peanut butter cups stuffed in the middle. I don't think I would like that. I love chocolate, but I don't think I would want I it in like the middle burgers, of my... I like burgers, and I like Reese's peanut butter cups, but I don't know if I would like them together. They also recommend you put a crispy onion on top of it, so I don't know. you count me out You definitely that. wouldn't do that. Hey, there's a new thing that Google Chrome recently put out like a week ago. They're talking about a thing called a Trump filter. And it's an antidote for people who don't want to read everything about Donald Trump. It's a three filter settings, mild, aggressive, and vindictive, that go from wiping wiping a page clean of any Trump photos, texts, or anything, blocking the entire site if there's a bunch of stuff on there. Now, here's the thing. Why just Trump? Why not politics filter? Why not Kardashians filter? Why not, you know, a filter for a Hillary filter if you're going to just make it fair? So they've got this thing, Google Chrome, talking about a Trump filter. Because he's in the news so much. You know why he's in the news so much? Because he's saying things that other people won't say. Here's why. Because the the reason, and I was watching Jimmy Kimmel the other night, and they were saying that 
you know, the reason that he's in the news so much, ratings. People are loving it. So I'm like, well, there you go. Uh, so apparently not everybody. But that's Google just Chrome. it. People are loving it because he's saying stuff that no, that, well, that everyone's thinking but, here's but the thing. won't say out loud. And he's some speaking the, to the hearts of America. Some of the stuff that he's saying is also making other people you know, a whole lot of money on the jokes that they're writing about it. So that's why he's in the news so much. Even if they don't like him, they're still talking about him because they get to, you know, have jokes anyway the trump filter available at google chrome for some reason hey if you're one of the 44 percent of the people who made a new year's resolution don't feel bad if you've already stumbled experts say by january 14th <laughs> one third of resolution makers will have quit <laughs> okay by february 1st six out of ten will be at it <laughs> what are you laughing so at? on on january 1st we actually it wasn't even january 1st we it made our resolution like a week january later. 4th yeah we Started our diet. We were doing great. Yeah, so we fourth, good. we did good. The fifth, we did okay. Yeah. The sixth, we ordered pizza. For yeah. <laughs> when you say we, I wasn't even home. Don't don't drag me into this. But I did have some of it when I got home. Just so, just so you know. Hey, are kids safer in cars driven by mom and dad or by grandma and grandpa? Kids may be safest in cars when grandma and grandpa are driving instead of mom and dad, according to a study. Uh, it says, we were surprised to discover that the injury rate was considerably lower in crashes where grandparents were at the wheel. Dr. Fred Henreich, an emergency medicine specialist at the Children's Hospital of Philadelphia, whew, that's a long title, and the study's lead author, said previous evidence indicates that car crashes are more common with older drivers, mostly people beyond 65. So the study looked at injuries rather than who had more crashes, but they found that children risk injury 50% less when they're in the car with grandma and grandpa. So take that and stuff it, mom and dad. <laughs> and, and there's a good reason to drop the kids off with grandma and grandpa and say, hey, I care about them so much. I think much. it depends on who the grandparents are. That's true as well. <laughs> I care about them so much, I just need this weekend to myself because, you know, I care about the kids so much and I want them to be safe. There you go. Hey, let's move on over here. Police in uh, Boynton Beach, something like that, Florida. Okay. It's a place in Florida. All right. They're converting a new building uh, for their headquarters they're putting a new police headquarters in and they got a great deal on a former Krispy Kreme donut store so their Krispy Kreme donut store is closing and the police headquarters is popping up there I just think that's really kind of funny hmm. that they're moving into a former donut shop you know because everybody's always making fun of the police with their donuts right yeah so apparently they didn't eat enough donuts there otherwise they would have been still in business but they got a nice <laughs> new police quarters out of it all right, let's move on to our strange law. In France, pet owners may not name their pigs Napoleon. Yeah. Oh, my God. That is the law <laughs> in France. It is a strange law. And this has been your Scoop of the Day. This portion of the program is brought to you by RoughToughKennels.com. Dog kennels and accessories sent to your front door wherever you live. Your dog deserves it. Learn more at RoughToughKennels.com. And it's time right now for my favorite program, something we do every Tuesday just because we can. We pick up the phone and call my father-in-law for a little program we like to call Tuesdays, Tuesdays with Charlie. Charlie. How you doing, Charlie? Uh, I can always tell what day it is when you call collect. There you go. <laughs> how, how are things going there today? You having a good Tuesday so far? Well, it's, it's Tuesday, you know. <laughs> you know. <laughs> are you kind of sick of snow where you live? I'm sick of everything right now. Been Aww. pushing a lot of snow. You need to move down south where it's nice and warm. You ain't going to believe this, but I'm going to turn into an alcoholic. <laughs> <laughs> You're right. I don't believe that. Well, what kind of stuff are we going to learn today? Anything that's believable? Do you use the same toothpaste every time, or do you vary your... I, think I buy Heidi whatever's buys... on sale. Yeah, I was going to say, I think she buys whatever's cheapest. Oh, uh, see, we buy the same stuff all the time. You do? What is yours? Colgate. When I was growing up, it used to be Gleam. It was always Gleam. I don't even know if they make that kind anymore. After they poisoned all those people, I think they made them quit. <laughs> and that was probably one of them, but some toothpaste contains antifreeze. Yeah, I know. Antifreeze? Really? Yeah. That's why you should never eat your toothpaste. You're supposed to spit that stuff out. Don't get green toothpaste. Why is that? Well, that's antifreeze color. Oh, I suppose. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I think I make this stuff up, don't you? I kind of think you do, yeah. <laughs> no, it's, a, it's, it's all legit. It's right off the internet. It's all true as can be it's from It's all the right off the internet. You know what the best-selling candy bar in Russia is? Um, What's that? Snickers. <laughs> yes. Is it really? Yes. Well, oh. those Russians got good taste. I think it's the best-selling one here, too, isn't it? I, it's got to be darn close. It's, good, it's a good candy bar. Whatever they did, they did it right. Well, if they take the 
peanut butter, it would be wonderful. Oh, no, it's good. Oh, and I, like I even peanuts. like Snickers with almond. Those are good, too. And this must be food facts today. I think my whole thing is nothing but food. <laughs> you must have been hungry. <laughs> <laughs> hey, do you know what that white powder is on chewing gum when you un- unwrap it? No. Uh, is I'm it not sure sugar? I want to know. Yeah, you do. It's marble dust. Really? Marble dust. Yeah. To keep the gum from sticking to itself? Yeah, so it keeps it from, even in hot weather, it won't stick to the wrapper or nothing. Huh, marble dust. Hey, then, did you know it takes 18 minutes to cool hot chocolate into a Hershey's Kiss? I did not. Really? 18 minutes, huh? 18 minutes. See, that's why you listen to me all, every <laughs> Tuesday, because there's a lot of stuff you don't know. There is a lot of stuff I don't know, and I learn something every Tuesday. Some of it's even accurate. And some of this stuff you probably don't even care about. <laughs> I, I care about all of it. Now, here go. This is the average American. Now, you know me and you are above average. Yeah. <laughs> By the age of 70, the average American will have eaten 14 cattle, 23 pigs, and 12 sheep. I had that wow. for breakfast today. <laughs> the Atkins diet. <laughs> <laughs> they say the average American because I've had one taste of sheep and that was it. You know, I'm not a fan of sheep either. Not at all. I like beef. I like chicken. I like pork and turkey and just about anything else, but eh, not a fan of sheep or lamb or whatever. Not not into that. I think lamb is what's in a gyro, isn't it? Yeah, I don't know. I like gyros. Thing. Tastes like something that come out of the back of a sheep. <laughs> 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 Terrible. Hey, then you drink coffee. I love oh, yeah. It. I about 75 cups a day. <laughs> Did you know there, there are more than 1,000 chemicals in a cup of coffee? I've read that. And only, 12, uh, only 26 have been tested and half of them have caused cancer in rats. Oh! Well, no. Keep the rats away from my coffee, then. If I was a rat, I'd say, don't drink that coffee. <laughs> Yikes. <laughs> maybe, maybe they should try decaf. Exactly. That's a little scary. And then i got one last thing here for you. Okay. 80% of people eat their corn on the cob in circles rather than side to side. I, I'm a circle guy. You eat yours in the circle. Yeah, yep. I'm, I'm side to side. I go side to side. What percentage, Charlie? Eight, 80%. Well, I'm a, we're in the 20% because I go side to side. Yeah, I go side to side. I don't. I go in circles. Yeah, I think that's weird. I watch you eat it and I'm just like, that's just weird. Oh, no, no, that's good. It reminds me of Bugs Bunny. They used to do that on the cartoons. You guys eat yours like a typewriter. It's like, I never thought that looked very awesome. I was like, you look like you're typing with an ear of corn in your mouth. We had food facts today. There you go. We did. Are you ready for your questions, Charlie? I think I got an answer. I've got. Two questions for you. First of all, how many warts does a warthog have? One. No, four. A warthog has ah. four warts all on his head. Really? Yeah. This is a thing that I did not know. Benjamin Franklin, I read his autobiography, and I don't remember reading this in there. He gave music lessons for what instrument, Charlie? Uh, he gave it on the piano. No, on the guitar. Ben Franklin... You didn't have guitars back then. Yeah, they did. Benjamin Franklin gave guitar lessons. He actually invented an instrument that has, like, uh, glass bowls on a long spindle, and you spin the bowl, and then they rub their hands, they get their hands wet, and they rub it on these crystal bowls, and it gives this really haunting sound. It's really kind of creepy, but Ben Franklin invented that. But he gave lessons for guitar. I had no clue. Huh. Seen that bowl thing. Yeah, it's kind of it's kind of cool, isn't it? That's how they make some of them noises like in horror shows and stuff there you go must be huh well charlie it was nice chatting with you we'll talk to you again next week all right well you know uh, if i'm around <laughs> we'll call my position you never know <laughs> we'll hope you'll be there because we love chatting with you okay. bye daddy bye fluff bye john <laughs> Bye-bye. my father-in-law right there we talk to him every tuesday just because we can it's a little program we like to call tuesdays, tuesdays with, with charlie, charlie. This portion of the program is brought to you by CarsForSale.com. If you're in the market to buy a car, truck, or van, find thousands of vehicles to choose from at CarsForSale.com. Fun fact for you, Heidi. What's that, John? Well, the Danish clinic that offers a treatment for people suffering with pathological gambling and internet addiction, they've now begun helping people with addiction to text messaging. Ah. So there you go. So if you got a problem with uh, gambling or internet... Or text messaging, a Danish clinic says they can help you. Mm. You have to get on the internet or maybe text somebody to find out more about it. <laughs> I don't have an addiction to any of that, I don't yeah. think. I don't so, think so I don't either. think I would need to go to a clinic. Hey, fun fact for you, Heidi. What's that, John? Falling in love can act as a potent painkiller. So if you're in pain, fall in love with somebody and you'll not be in as much pain. 
Mm. Unless they break your heart, then you'll be in more pain. Then you'll be. Then it's worse. Fun fact for you, Heidi. What's that, John? Did you know that the early prototype of the Slurpee machine used an automobile air conditioning unit? I did not. They used a, an air conditioning unit from a car for the very first prototype of a Slurpee machine. Did you know that Slurpees in the United States have air injected hey. and the ones in Canada do not? Yeah, we talked about that one week ago today <laughs> on did. Tuesdays with Charlie. <laughs> All right, coming up, we've got some other fun stuff to share. Thanks for listening to The John and Heidi Show. This portion of the program is brought to you by StoneGroupArchitects.com. It's more than a building. It's design and function working together. Check out the project portfolio at StoneGroupArchitects.com. Thank you so much for listening to The John and Heidi Show on a Tuesday. Want an easy way to lose weight, ladies? Yes. Avoid, uh, I'm sorry, avoid the impulse items. Ac- according to a recent study. <laughs> like French fries. <laughs> I don't know. According to a recent study from IHL, I don't even know who that is, and don't they don't either. even say anything in here who it is, the average American woman could lose up to 4.1 pounds in a year. Is that all? Who even cares? 4.1 yeah. pounds? <laughs> By not purchasing impulse items like chocolate candies, chips, and soda. Yeah. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> once they're in the checkout line. So if you get in the checkout line and it says men could lose an average of 3.1 pounds by following the same advice. Did they really need a study? While women have an overall higher average, men under 25 are the heaviest consumers of caloric impulse items, consuming enough each year for an additional 8 pounds. So young men could actually lose 8 pounds. Average men could use lose three point one pounds, and ladies could lose four point one pounds. I need to come avoiding. up with a study that I can do and get funded oh, for. And that's because that's ridiculous. They're just saying if you buy stuff at the checkout counter, it's going to help you add weight to your overall life. Well, yeah. yeah, duh. That's. <laughs> I don't think anybody was shocked by this study, <laughs> other than the fact that somebody actually funded that to look oh, real. Wait a minute, you, man. seriously? So I- irritating. HL. Is who got that uh, funding? I don't even know who it is. They're so ashamed of it. They didn't even put <laughs> they their name. Say, it doesn't matter who we are. It's probably just three guys: Ivan, Hank, and Larry. <laughs> you guys, we got a grant. IHL. What are we gonna do? I don't know. <laughs> I was just at the checkout stand and I bought some gum. Let's do a study on that. I wonder how much people weigh because uh. of that. Anyway, uh, good job IHL for coming up with a very predictable result study. Coming up here in a bit, we're gonna talk about speeding tickets. And your parents, that's all on the way. Thanks for listening to The John and Heidi Show. This portion of the program is brought to you by DirecTV, 1-800-259-7646. Also brought to you by RVWheelitor.com. If you're buying an RV or selling an RV, check out RVWheelitor.com. And the Dollar Shave Club, here's John and Heidi. Heidi, have you ever gotten a speeding ticket uh, in yes. your entire life? Um, yes. Did your parents know about it? Yes. Well... What did your parents say when you got your speeding ticket? Were they upset? Were they happy? Were they mad? Were they probably not happy? Well, my my first speeding ticket, my I think my only speeding ticket, I was 21 at the time, so I don't oh, okay. think they really cared. Well, I used to get seatbelt tickets all the time, and they would chastise me for that. But Well, what did your dad do when you got a speeding ticket, folks? Did he make you pay it? Did he ground you? Did he hang your car up on a tree? The reason I ask, 16-year-old Stephen Cost of Alabaster, Alabama, Got his third ticket in a month, and his dad Whoa. suspended his pickup truck in the air, hung it from a tree. Must have been one strong tree. He used a backhoe to lift the car's truck up several feet in the air, then chained it to a tree to keep it there. He also put a sign in the window that said, maybe for sale soon. Ooh. <laughs> I got a speeding ticket once, and I even remember, this was my first speeding ticket. I remember seeing the policeman. I was like, ooh, somebody's going to get pulled over. I didn't know it was me. I had no clue. <laughs> I was driving my brother's van, and his speedometer was way off. <laughs> So I'm clipping along, thinking I'm going the speed limit, and I got pulled over, and the guy goes, you know how fast you're going? I was like, yeah. No. <laughs> no, I, I was saying I'm going, I was going 25. He goes, you're going almost 40. I'm like, what? Really? So my dad made me go to court and fight that. I lost, of course. <laughs> but he made me, because he said, you know what? If you have to do that, maybe, maybe you'll slow down. Turns out dad was wrong. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Thanks for listening to the John and Heidi Show. This portion of the program is brought to you by GunUp.com. If you're a gun lover, you'll be in heaven at GunUp.com. Built by experienced military veterans, shooting sports competitors, and publishing professionals, they have awesome stories and articles that are read by millions of gun enthusiasts. Check it out at GunUp.com. Think only babies like rubber duckies? Well, think again. You know who else does in their bath? The Queen of England. (laughs) <laughs> yeah she what? likes 
Yeah, sale of rubber ducks have gone through the roof once the Queen of England has uh, finally announced that she likes utilizing a rubber ducky during the bath time. Whatever. <laughs> Asda, what the manu- do with the duck? I don't know. Asda, the manufacturer of rubber ducks, rushed an extra 80,000 yellow ducks to stores after a flood of inquiries and reports of p- decorators using rubber ducks uh, and sporting inflatable crowns. They put like these uh, little ducks with crowns on them now. Shoppers are apparently following Her Majesty. Customer service department has had scores of people asking if they can buy rubber ducks, like buy a bunch of them, and they put in a, a bunch of extra orders to meet the duck demand. The toys are being displaced on shelves, especially the ones bearing the crown and the word, as seen in all of the best baths. So wow. We've got friends in England, and I love our friends in England, but you oh, guys absolutely. in England are kind of weird. <laughs> I'm like, the queen bathes with a duck. Oh, I need a duck. Is that yeah. going to make you a queen? I don't think so. Mm. All right. Coming up, we got donkeys at the movies. We'll tell you more in a bit. This portion of the program is brought to you by Dollar Shave Club. You can get razors sent to your door each month for just $1, plus a couple of bucks shipping. It's an amazing deal. Log on to dollarshaveclub.com slash radio to learn more. That's dollarshaveclub.com slash radio. Now, back to the John and Heidi Show podcast. Thank you so much for joining us on the John and Heidi Show. The headline, Donkey at the Movies. Now, you know this is going to be a fun story. Mm -hmm. I mean, it doesn't matter what the story is. I've already got, in my mind, a pretty fun party going on. (laughs) A New Zealand farmer has been banned from a drive-in movie theater for watching movies on the back of a donkey. That's not quite as fun as I was expecting it to be. It was outside. Cinema bosses say Jeff Roeder blocks the view of other viewers while on the back of the animal. The 35-year-old bachelor, imagine that, argues <laughs> that he doesn't have a car and he has no other means of transportation. He Aww. threatened to sue the theater chain because everybody else can take whatever they rode and sit in it. Here's my idea, Mr. Roder, Jeff Roder. Uh, he's the one that drives his donkey, rides his donkey to the outdoor theater to watch the movie. Bring a lawn chair with you. There you go, and then tie your yeah. donkey to the lawn chair. No, don't tie it to the lawn chair. <laughs> Tie the donkey to a fence or something. <laughs> but you can sit in the lawn chair. Well, what if he likes to watch the movies with his donkey? He, they, he can sit by his donkey, but don't tie the donkey to the lawn chair. If he gets spooked, he'll be dragging it through the theater. <laughs> that would be bad. I'm just thinking that could turn out That'd bad. That would be I entertainment wonder... for everybody else at the drive-in. <laughs> While he's there, I wonder if he gets popcorn, if he feeds popcorn to the donkey. Probably. Do donkeys like popcorn? To. Do they like popcorn? Is I'm that a... sure his donkey likes popcorn. He, he takes his donkey his to donkey movies. His donkey likes movies. There you go. This guy, it's in New Zealand. Now, there's uh, not as many drive-in theaters as there used to be, but uh, we've gone to drive-in mm-hmm. theaters. Every once in a while, we'll uh, get a hankering for that, and we'll drive out and, and go enjoy it. Uh, and we had a van that the back seat folded backwards. Yes. That was the coolest thing ever. It was so awesome. You'd open the back hatch of a minivan, and then the, the seat folded backwards where you could sit there and watch the movie. I loved that. Right. I don't know why it's, the movie seems just so much better when you're you know, sitting in a vehicle rather than in a theater. It doesn't I, make any I sense just, to me. I disagree. <laughs> you know, I think the reason that you like it better is because usually while we're sitting in the vehicle, you're drinking as well. Well, that's yeah, that's, <laughs> that is the plus. You can bring your own So the beverages. headline here was donkey at the movies. I could put a different word there and describe what some people are at the movies, but we'll just move on. We've got some good news on the way. This portion of the program is brought to you by DirecTV. Call 1-800-259-7646. They have hundreds of channels to choose from, with many packages to fit your viewing desires. Learn more at 1-800-259-7646. We always try to wrap things up with a positive story, and I think this one's kind of a funny one here. An adventurous elephant seal got tired of her life in the San Francisco Bay and made the high-stakes trek across a major highway to start a new life on dry land. Wildlife experts in Northern California had to deal with a seal in the journey uh, about a week ago when a 500-pound elephant seal caused a traffic jam. They reportedly said that it was trying to cross the dividing wall on Highway 37 in Sonoma, California. The Highway Patrol spokesperson said the San Francisco, that's where he said it, to the San Francisco Chronicle, Every time we got her in the water, she circled back and tried to climb out again. So I just thought it was a cute story that this uh, elephant seal apparently was done in the water. and was saying, I'm moving, in, I'm moving inland. I don't want to be there anymore. Hmm. And they had to keep throwing her back in. And then they'd throw her back in. And every time, she'd climb back out. Because here's the thing. When you're a 500-pound elephant seal, 
you'll do whatever you want to do. <laughs> just, I just think that would be really fun. Can you imagine being one of the cars that are sitting there waiting? You're late for something. And so what took oh, you so long Oh, I can imagine you. Oh, my gosh. You would be freaking what out. What took you so long to get here? Well, you'll never believe it. There was a 500-pound elephant seal <laughs> in the middle of the road. <laughs> so anyway, you got that going for you. So that's our positive story. Not quite as positive as some of our other stories, but it was just funny and it made me smile. So hopefully that made you smile as well. Heidi, did that make you smile? That made me smile. Now you love elephants, but do you love elephant seals as well? I don't really care for elephants. Seals. Not a fan of elephant seals? No. I couldn't believe that. But I, I ever... love elephants. I know you love elephants. All right. Time to say goodbye, Heidi. Goodbye, Heidi. Goodbye, everybody. Have a great day. Thanks for listening to the John and Heidi show on a Tuesday. Hopefully we'll see you back here again tomorrow. Time now for the bonus break, only available here on the John and Heidi Show podcast. Your bonus break is brought to you by the Dollar Shave Club. You can learn more at dollarshaveclub.com slash radio. When you get there, I want to warn you, you're going to fall in love with these guys, and you're going to sign up for their razors, and you're going to be hooked. Yesterday, I popped out my uh, razor that I've been using for like three or four days, and I popped in a new razor, and look how smooth that is. What a difference. Oh, yeah. What a difference a shave makes. If you'd like to shave nice and close and you don't ever want to have to go to the store looking for razors again, for as little as 3 bucks a month, you will be set. Check it out at dollarshaveclub.com slash radio. I've got uh, your mouse over here, too, don't I? You do. I was like, my mouse is not working. That's uh, That one's mine. Thank I'll give you. that one back to you. Uh, got a thing here that I never thought of before, but uh, why do military uniforms have a stripe down the side of each pant leg? I have no idea. One time, military trousers were made to fit so tightly that buttons down the side of the legs were needed so the wearer could get his feet through. To oh. hide these buttons, tailors put a strip down. And once they uh, outgrew those kind of pants where they have buttons all the way down the side, the, the strip was left. So that's what's so there. So why, why would they have made them so tight? I don't know. What would be the benefit of that? So you don't have baggy jeans getting in the way, I suppose, or baggy pants. They're not jeans, but baggy pants. Huh. I'm not sure, but that's what that stripe is for, and uh, it used to have buttons underneath of it. Two new dog breeds have joined the prestigious listings of the American Kennel Club. You'd think they would tell me in the story which breeds, but of <laughs> course they didn't. Thank you. That's good to know. Wow. Good information, John. Thanks for sharing. Congratulations, two new dogs we don't know about. <laughs> Hey, losing a dog is heart-wrenching, but what if you could get your dog back, kind of? A couple from England is celebrating the birth of the first cloned Oh, that's puppy. a bad idea. The couple lost their beloved dog, Dylan, last year. The eight-year-old boxer died of a heart attack after being diagnosed with an imp- inoperable brain tumor. They found a South Korean company, I'm not even going to say their name because I think this is a bad idea, which said, hey, for $100,000... Oh, my gosh. We can clone your dog. The firm produced not one, but two embryos using cells from a dead puppy. All so, I'm picturing is Pet cemetery. <laughs> yeah. I'm thinking this could be bad. And here's, here's my question. If you want to get another boxer and you have $100,000, you could have your pick of every boxer in the world. Boxers are awesome oh, yeah. dogs. People with their own trained boxers would sell you their yeah. boxer for $100,000. For $100,000, you could, their you could get... Their own beloved family pet. You sure, could get Mike you Tyson, an actual boxer boxer for $100,000. That is insane. Yeah, $100,000 to clone a couple pups. Hey, people who spend the most... Who send the most icons have the raciest thoughts. Match.com survey of 5,000 singles probed emoji use in dating. The dating site found that people who think about sex a lot are more likely to use emojis. The survey also revealed that both men and women favor the winky face when flirting. Now, I use the winky face quite often, but it's not when flirting. I do it because I'm kind of a, a bit of a, a smart aleck, and I'll put a comment on Facebook, and I put the winky face behind it because I want people to know I'm kidding. Mm-hmm. But not everybody gets that. Because there are some people that still think, are you serious? I'm like, <laughs> no, I'm not. Did you see the smi- smiley I face? I sent you a winky face. I, I, put a, I had a friend that said that to me the other day because they were giving me a hard time over something I posted. And he was like, I said I had a winky I put a winky face there. Didn't you see the winky face? <laughs> like, yeah, I saw the winky face. Is that admissible in court during the divorce? <laughs> well, Your Honor, I did put a winky face. <laughs> well, then this whole darn thing is thrown out. All right. Wacky but true. Please seize tons of smuggled chicken feet. 
Ew. Police in China have seized and destroyed 20 tons Ew. of smuggled chicken feet. What do you do with chicken feet? Uh, it's very popular in China, served as a cold dish with beer. Ew. And if you're eating chicken feet, <laughs> you need a whole lot of beer. That's going to do it for your bonus break. Brought to you by the Dollar Shave Club. Learn more at dollarshaveclub.com slash radio.